The voice, right? Also, just on a first impression, I'm just loving the little slide guitar that you hear in that background. It sounds like a Western. I don't know. It sounds like this is like some kind of a gunslinger. 23 seconds. I already love it. This is so not what I was expecting. I mean, listen to all those guitars. You can hear that delayed guitar coming in the background of this beat. Do you even call this a beat? This is amazing. Okay, there's something to be said about, this is the first track on the album, right? This is the number, the first track that everyone's gonna hear. If you buy the album, this is not an accessible track. This is not like a pop track, okay? So it just sets up the album in such a way where I'm expecting the unexpected. <laughs> I just got this new brush and it's amazing how much of a difference having a good brush makes. It's dropped out for swagging a grip. Not on me. Okay, it's like that western kind of like reminding me of like Kill Bill. This song continues that theme. I love that. The doubles off me because we was living in hell. Couldn't have okay, that was like a synth sound that. It's kind of like a synth sound that you would almost never use. I love that he's using a synth sound that you've like heard it on GarageBand and would be like, no way I'm gonna use that in a song. I love that. This is so amazing, like when it kicks in here, it's three and a half, four minutes into the album and we've kicked into this amazing, kind of weird, super funky beat. This is setting up a really good album. I have to go to the store to get more longer wood to stretch my canvas, but I decided to, and I was told to react to this. Don't say I never did nothing for you. This is two reactions in one video. And it's the downward spiral. Oh, I love that Indian flute. I mean, like a Native American flute in there. Ooh. Ooh. That, uh... That synth right there. And the voice over his voice. That, uh... He totally reminds me of Hunter S. Thompson, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Like, just like this story of the downward spiral. Love it. This album so far is a lot more of the traditional um, jazzy, jazz influenced beats. More like what I would think of as being more traditional hip hop. But yet, it still has a very experimental vibe to it. <laughs> this is his radio song? Oh man. It's like off key singing? That's. <laughs> that was the deluxe version of the album that I listened to. It's an hour long. This album was one that Danny Brown released on his label for free. I bought the deluxe version on iTunes. My feeling, my sense is that there's more tracks on this than what Danny Brown originally intended. Some of the songs are just better. Probably should have listened to the actual release and not the deluxe edition, but a lot of good songs in there. Love it. <laughs> I 
Kendrick. Beat has a very Kendrick vibe to it. I wouldn't be surprised if he had a hand in the production. I don't know. I'm like two break with two breaks, a house on a straight. Off a two piece, a two pick, I flip the room, it's mine. Stuck a brand new song with my wrong by Tasso. That's reminding me of some Wu Tang clan or something, really. Fuck my brown nigga, I'm about to get it. Talk, I'm trying to eat. Dude, that flow though. I mean that that rhythm that gives me one to dance. It makes you want to dance, but it's not a dance song like like a pop dance song. That's that's brilliant. It just occurs to me as, as I'm listening to this, I'm like, why is Danny Brown not like a huge artist like Kendrick Lamar or something? He must be working with some people who are really on the cutting edge of this synthy, really cool sound. It's just so different from... While I don't know exactly who he is working with, I do know who he's not working with. This is that story. This is me when I was about 12 years old and these are skinny jeans. These are normal jeans, baggy jeans, girl jeans, Hollister jeans. I bring up this footage from an old skate video to prove that there was a time when it didn't matter how skinny your jeans were. I had a great time and I learned a lot, to be honest, being around him, man. So, shouts out to that whole host of fifth and all the men, G Unit, man. So, was G Unit trying to scout you? Like to join me? I mean, no, G 50 was down with side of me, but I, now it goes back into now I'm already setting to my look. So this one, I was wearing the skinny jeans and, you know, thrift store clothes and shit like that. So he like, no, I mean, you need to be wearing, like, you need to look non-approachable. You need to look mean. Like, you need to wear big jeans and shit. And I was like, I wasn't with that shit. So Pitty's like, fuck that shit. <laughs> Curtis James Jackson III, also known as 50 Cent, early 2000s rap tastemaker, seller of over 30 million albums, writer of Indie Club, did not sign Danny Brown for wearing skinny jeans. And this year, appeared at the Super Bowl halftime show wearing skinny jeans. What a world we live in where 50 Cent is wearing skinny jeans on TV and TikTok influencers are telling me to never wear my skinny jeans again. You're both wrong. I got love for all jeans, baby. Okay, there we have, again, this kind of like acoustic guitar, I think kind of like rhythmic acoustic guitar playing. Really reminds me of kind of like Kill Bill again. I love it. 
This song feels like a mariachi band was playing along with this amazing DJ or something. This is cool. <laughs> Now we go from that mariachi band into this song where we have kind of reminds me of like a genie or something some kind of like Middle Eastern maybe vibe All of course punctuated by boom bappy beats and then the synth bass is just luscious <laughs> Alternate beat right there, that little... So Danny Brown has at least two vocal tones. He has that high pitched, really energetic, really amazing one, and this lower pitched, more subdued, more seductive Danny Brown. That takes a lot of skill to think like, okay, I'm gonna have this tone and I'm also gonna have this. Maybe you're wondering why I chose to make the painting look like this. Well, here's why. I don't know if Danny Brown cares about cars. I don't know anything about it, but I think a car would be a really good uh, thing to draw. Diplomat. On the Dodge Diplomat. I think this is it. Here we go. I don't know if it's the exact right same car, but I'm just going to be basing it on the Dodge Diplomat. It looks similar enough. I think this is going to look good. Hello. How many paint? Are you going to help daddy paint? Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to do it. Okay. You okay? Can you paint Sadie? Yeah. All right, let's see your Sadie. Can you paint Sadie right here? What do you want to say to all the aspiring young painters out there? Do you want to say... Hi? This is pretty crazy. He's got that techno beat going. Now what's he doing with his voice here? This song should be in like a Charles Dick Dickens novel. It should be like, what's the one where he's like, please sir, can I have some more? Or like, like even uh, Pink Floyd, like The Wall or something. Yeah. That, Rhythm is just so, it's so jarring. I, I mean, I think that he wants it to be like, to make you feel uncomfortable. It's doing a good job if he does. The choir, the guitar, I feel like I'm in church and we're talking about smoking weed. Love it. 
All right, here we go. This final track. I love the like filtered bongos that are really setting the tempo for this beat. It's not every day that you get to hear an amazing album like Atrocity Exposition for the first time. As I was doing this painting, I was transported back to November a few years ago. I was painting the living room in my house and I had heard of an album by an artist, Frank Ocean. My friend Matt told me about the album, so I decided to check it out. I played it on my stereo super loud as I was painting. As I was laying down the brush strokes, I just remember being super in awe of this amazing record. Now every time I hear that record, I reminisce about this really nice November fall day when I heard it for the first time. It's a taxi. See the wheel? Taxi comes from the Dirty Laundry video and I know that's not on this album, but is what it is. I really like how this reddish orange color turned out for the letters and how the letters and the numbers interplay with that yellow color. That was totally unintentional, but it just happened to be that way because of the way that the computer rendered it. Oh, I really like this green color too. I'll show you, I got it. $2, can't beat that. My wife, Kristen, when she saw it, she didn't even notice that it was a taxi. I think that's probably good that it's not so super immediately obvious. I guess in school, I remember people being very realistic at drawing and that being like a really important thing to be really realistic, but is this unrealistic? I mean, this is not supposed to be a photo, right? I think that that idea really works well with this Atrocity Exhibition album. Danny Brown is not trying to take a photograph of what hip hop is and just reproduce what he's seeing that other people are doing. He's trying to make something completely different out of what he's seeing. I think that that's why this painting turned out the way that it did. Storytelling is a big consideration on this record. Also, being offbeat is a big consideration. I think for all of Danny Brown's music, not only in a figurative type of way, but also literally offbeat a lot of times. Some of that you can see in this painting as well. You can see I changed colors on that orange. It was a dirty brown and then I turned it into this really rich vermilion color. Also, there are a lot of brush strokes that happened in this painting because of the way that the record was so rhythmic, especially in the yellow, you can see there's a lot of very moving brush strokes. Now, every time I listen to this album, I'm gonna be transported back to this time, making this painting. And it's been a happy time, so I'm happy about that. It pays to fit in. It pays the bills to fit in. But sometimes it's more valuable, more challenging, yes, but more rewarding to not fit in. Whether it be fitting into a pair of skinny jeans, fitting into a musical genre, or fitting in with YouTube contemporaries, you may decide that fitting in is important to you. It seems to me that it doesn't matter to Danny Brown. Maybe we can learn something from him. Maybe he can teach us to go against the grain. Instead of just being swept away by the flow, the trend makers aren't the trend followers. They're the ones who are able to see beyond what's hot at any given moment. To see the world as it could be, not how it is. I think Danny Brown is a visionary in this way. I only hope that some of his profound vision has rubbed off on me through making this video.
The only reason I made this video is because Zach Lee commented this. Please comment who I should do next. I don't know that many artists. I just have a few that I really like. And if you like this vid, check out this vid I did about JPEG Mafia. Subscribe or die.